what's good internet my name is attack slug and welcome to my tables ladders and chairs 2018 predictions video this show has 12 count them 12 matches on it and they haven't announced which of those matches will be on the kickoff pre-show or, or whatever it's just 12 matches for a show outside of a WrestleMania is insane. I'm going to assume at least something here will end up being a squash match or end up not happening because of illness, injury, etc. But I'm going to predict here these 12 matches that are currently booked on TLC this Sunday. Number one being the finals of the Mixed Match Challenge Season 2. We have R-Truth and Carmella versus the modern day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal, and Alicia Fox. And the winners of this match, the team who wins, will get into the number 30 spot in their respective Royal Rumbles. So to me, that says the best option and the funniest option is going to be R-Truth and Carmella. Because then you can have R-Truth screw up and totally try to come out as number 30 during the Women's Royal Rumble, and that's just funny, right? That's kind of his gimmick, so that'll make the most sense there. Jinder and Alicia, eh, whatever. So I'm going to call R-Truth and Carmella and certainly a dance break during that matchup. Anyway, moving on. We have your cruiserweight champion, Buddy Murphy, defending against Cedric Alexander. And I think keeping Buddy Murphy as the cornerstone of 205 Live as champion is your best option here. So I think he retains his title in what could be one of the most fun matches, one of the most exciting matches of the evening. Also, no one can stop the man here. Like, what are you doing? Get her off the ladder. Seriously. There you go, Asuka. The Empress with the powerbomb. Anyway, speaking of ladders, though, we move on to a ladder match, but not for a title. A ladder match with the guitar being in place of the belt, and it will be Bobby Lashley versus Elias. And I can't recall what Bobby Lashley's nickname has been right now, but Bobby Lashley versus Elias. And is this match already over? Like, is this match already over because no one can get up and the Queen wins? Really? That was extraordinarily short, even for this game's standards. What in the blue hell? So Elias versus Lashley, essentially a guitar on a pole match, even though it's not on a pole, it's being hung off the... where they would hang the belt or the briefcase or whatever... Besides the point. And just getting the guitar does not win you the match. It's just, oh, if you get the guitar, you can use it. But that's just kind of, I don't know, standard stuff. So I'm going to say that Elias being the face wins this match. Anyway, moving on to Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. Nothing on the line here. Just kind of a regular standard one-on-one -on -one contest. No belts, no sips, none of that stuff. And certainly Drew has the rocket ship strapped to him. So I would say Drew all the way. I mean, you could make the argument, oh, perhaps the demon might appear. But also, Balor was not on Raw due to some kind of an illness. So honestly, this match might not even happen if he still has whatever that illness happens to be. So I'm going to say McIntyre either way. Anyway, we have Randy Orton, who wants to crush all your heroes, versus Rey Mysterio in a chairs match. And considering the disrespect and destruction that Randy has wrought upon the returning Rey Mysterio, that's a lot of R's in there, we would obviously, I think, in this match have the face win in Rey Mysterio. Like, we had Randy Orton beat Jeff Hardy, that was a thing, and then Jeff was gone for a couple of weeks and he came back, so didn't really do that much to destroying the legacy of Jeff Hardy. And we have Mysterio, who, until that match with Orton, had not even lost since he came back, besides that and Survivor Series, hadn't got pinned, and it's Mysterio, right? So how can you bet against Mysterio, even with the PG-era chair match they're going to have? I say it's right. Mysterio. Anyway, moving on to this match. Natalia versus Ruby Riot in a tables match. And you have to imagine that the Riot squad going to play a factor heavily unless at some point during the show they ban them from ringside. Like, who's going to come out? Delete! 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 Who's going to come out and pair up with Natalia, right? To prevent the Riot Squad from interfering in this very personal match about sunglasses and Jimmy Old Nineheart and that whole thing. 
So, barring any of that happening, Ruby Riot should get the victory, just because she has the numbers game with the Riot Squad. Otherwise, at what point, if Natalia somehow manages to get that victory, does that make the Riot Squad just that much more ineffectual in what they do? You gotta have some kind of heels that have some kind of momentum on your show, even if it is Raw, and Raw is generally not that good. So, moving on from that, we have another TLC match. We have the Monster Among Men, Braun Strowman, who recently had elbow surgery, versus the interim, the next general manager of Raw, Baron Corbin. And if Baron wins this match, he is permanent GM. If he loses, he has no more power. Now, my prediction here is that number one, Heath Slater, will be the referee. Number two, this match might not even happen because we don't know if Braun is actually cleared to compete on Sunday because elbow surgery, like, legit, like, you know, not that long ago. So that might not even be a thing. If Braun's clear to do one move, he'll do one move and still win because it's Braun freaking Strowman, man. I predict shenanigans of some type, but if the match happens, certainly Slater as the ref. And could Slater screw Baron and therefore Baron couldn't fire him because he wouldn't have any more power anymore and then Slater back to wrestling? I don't know. There's a number of ways to go through this, but I think at the end of the day, they might still be setting up for Alexa Bliss to end up as the GM of Raw, or perhaps a Matt Hardy, because that, my friends, would be wonderful, yes! So, Braun Strowman gets that if the match actually goes through. Moving on to your potential match of the night. Where are the commentators? It will be your SmackDown Tag Team Champions of The Bar. We are The Bar. Versus The Usos Who Have It Locked Down. Versus The New Day Triple Threat Tag Team. I wish this match was TLC. Because if anybody could top the matches with the Hardys, Edge of Christian, and those damn Dudleys, it would be these three teams. In any event, could totally steal the show if given the proper amount of time and whatever else. But who, 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 will end up being the winner of this contest? I feel like if the bar does not have the titles right now, they're kind of stuck in a weird limbo of only being important because they have the titles. Now, I would love a singles run for Cesaro, who is, who is extraordinarily talented, but they don't seem to care about that. So I think that the bar retains their titles because at this point, what else do you do with the bar. But honestly, all three teams extremely talented, and it could go any of those three ways pretty, pretty easily. So, uh, you know, there's that. So, moving on to the Raw Women's Championship. Here comes Asuka, who apparently is pissed that she lost that TLC match uh, five minutes ago. That's weird, but okay. You can't interfere in a Raw match, Asuka. You're on SmackDown. What are you doing? We got your Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, versus Nia Jax, who I'm not a fan of due to her actions, due to her injuring of other wrestlers who, who, who I do like. But this one, I think it's still Ronda Rousey all the way. I think you're going to book somebody on SmackDown to win that Women's Royal Rumble in January, and that person goes on to challenge, what the hell are we, goes on to challenge Ronda Rousey at Wrestle. Mania for that title. So therefore, having her lose it here would make zero sense in the matter. That one is pretty easy. Ronda Rousey retains Nia. Go back to whatever you were doing. And there you go. So, moving on to the match we already saw, as Asuka is done here. She's leaving. We have Becky Lynch, the man, your SmackDown Women's Champion versus the Queen Charlotte Flair versus the Empress of Tomorrow. Asuka. And here goes Ruby with Natalia through the table. That sounds about right. I guess you can give the assist to Asuka there. Alright. So, Becky versus Charlotte versus Asuka. Again, another match that is easily a potential match of the year contender considering what we know that all three are capable of. They could definitely knock it out of the park in this TLC match. And the question is, though, at the end of the night, who's going to be this SmackDown Women's Champion? And honestly, I think the most compelling thing you could go with would be having Asuka win the belt. Because A, it makes her a threat again after being a joke since pretty much WrestleMania. 
but B, if either Becky or Charlotte walk out with the title, then we're going to assume that whoever has the belt is not going to win that Royal Rumble and not going to challenge Ronda Rousey. And personally, I want the mystery. Will it be Becky or will it be, will it be Charlotte challenging Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania and which one of them is going to win the Rumble? Now, my opinion is they should do a Bret Hart Lex Luger, have them both all out at the same time, and then work the angle from there. But, you know, just some free advice, you guys. Just some just some free booking advice in terms of what, what, what could be the most interesting way to go with that particular scenario. Now then, after that, we have one of the biggest bills for this show, which is Seth freaking Rollins, your IC champion, defending against Dean Ambrose. Dirty Dean. Why, Dean, why? And that one, I think, you need to give it to, to, to Dean Ambrose. Like, he had all this build, this heel turn, everything else that happened between Seth and Dean, I think, having Dean beat Seth and prove at least one of his points on that show that Seth is, that, that Seth is not an architect would be the best way to go with it. Because having Seth retain, then everything that Dean said since his heel turn is just kind of rendered a bit moot, right? Like, you want to have some kind of consequence to a turn because otherwise, why even do it? But, again, I also want Dean to win that belt and then treat it like Naito treated the belt in New Japan. Just totally just doesn't care about it. Would be a great fit for his character. But would they do that? Probably not. Probably not. Anyway, I say, end of the night, Dean Ambrose, your new IC champion. Which brings us to this match. Your final match of the card. I'm hoping the actual main event. Can we actually have... The WWE title be in the main event because Brock Lesnar is never around. That'd be nice. Please. And we have AJ Styles, the phenomenal one. The face that runs the place. Going up against the new Daniel Bryan. The angry college pr pr professor hippie Daniel Bryan is a fantastic heel for 2018 anyway. And I love it. It's fantastic. It's, this match, again... Another match on paper with two guys who can definitely go and get it done in the ring and create a compelling story in the ring, and I want to see it. I need to see it. It should be awesome. But again, I, th I said the same thing about AJ and Nakamura, and they had a bunch of matches that were kind of eh, middling. So here's hoping this is going to deliver on what we are hoping it's going to be. But at the end of the night, I want the new Daniel Bryan to continue his reign on SmackDown Live. Will it happen? I mean, I feel like that they had the belt on AJ for so long. It was, what, 371 days? Something like that? It was an epic run with the belt. I think let somebody else have it for at least a little while. And I think Daniel Bryan is doing some really compelling work right now. So here's hoping he keeps it for at least a little while. Perhaps until Mania, until someone dethrones him at Mania. And uh, that should be fun. Anyway, that was a hefty predictions video for what could be a hefty year-ending pay-per-view for WWE. I'm Attack Slug. I'll see you back here for predictions at the Royal Rumble. More videos every day. I'll see you next time right here on this channel. Will it be the phenomenal forearm here from AJ Styles? Come on now. AJ, hit it. Boom! And is that enough to put away Debra in my Fave five. No, it is not. See you next time. And I'm out.